In this video, we're going to talk about multiplying polynomials. We've just, in the last video, discussed ad adding and subtracting polynomials, and so the natural step is to go to multiplying. I'm first going to start off with the simplest type of multiplication or the simplest types of polynomials to multiply, and that's to not monomials. So multiplying monomials, it is as simple, and again, we've already done this before, but it's as simple as multiplying the coefficients and then multiplying the variables that are in those uh, monomials. Let's look at a couple of examples. In this example here, we have 11x to the 9th times 9x to the 10th. All right. And if I look at this example, my actual coefficients are 11 and 9. So I'm going to multiply 11 times 9. And my variable parts are x to the 9th times x to the 10th. Of course, 9 times 11 is 99, and again, with our exponents here, we have to add them when we multiply, and 9, time, 9 plus 10 is 19. So 11x to the 9th times 9x to the 10th is 99x to the 19th. Let's look at another example. In this example, we have 3a to the 5th, b to the 8th, c times 9b, c to the 7th, d to the 4th. All right. Again, I'm going to employ that same technique that I just used. And again, you don't have to go through the process of rewriting these things side by side. But I have my two new, my two coefficients. I have an a to the fifth. Notice my second polynomial does not have an a term. And so that's going to stay a to the fifth. I have a b to the eighth times a b. I have a c times c to the seventh and notice here that this first polynomial doesn't have a d but this one does and so I'm just going to have that as d to the fourth again I multiply my 3 and my 9 that's 27 a is the only base a so I get a to the fifth remember there's understood to be a 1 as the exponent on that b so if I add the 8 and the 1 I'll get 9 so I get b to the ninth Again, c also has an exponent of 1 understood to be there. c times c to the 7th. If I add the 1 and the 7, I get c to the 8th. And then last but not least, we have d to the 4th. So those two mu multiply to 27, a to the 5th, b to the 9th, c to the 8th, times d to the 4th. And that would be our final solution. That is multiplying two monomials. Now what I want to talk about is multiplying a monomial by a polynomial. And again, we've sort of done this one as well, um, even way back when we first started looking at algebra, um, introduction to algebra. Basically, when you have a monomial multiplied by a polynomial, sort of like this example right here, as you can see, we have one thing on the outside. Remember, when there is no sign between the, these symbols here, it's understood to be multiplication. And then I have this, multi this polynomial here. All I have to do is use my distributive property. So I've got to distribute this negative 2x to the third to not only this term. Okay, so if I multiply that out, it's going to be a negative 2x to the third times this x to the third. But I'm going to have to distribute it to that one, right? And notice I have a negative 2x to the third, and that's a minus 3x squared. Right? Remember, a negative times a negative is a positive, so I'm just going to write this as plus, and then that way I don't have to worry about the signs anymore. It's going to be 2x cubed times 3x squared. Then I'm going to distribute it to the 7x. Notice here, still a negative 2x cubed, but that's a positive 7x, and so I'm going to write a negative times a positive as a negative. So I have a minus 2x cubed times 7x. And then last but not least, I want to distribute the negative 2x cubed to the minus 18. Again, a negative is going to be multiplied by that negative there, so it will become a positive. So I get plus 2x cubed times 18. All right? And now the rest is just doing the mon monomial times a monomial, just like we just did in the previous two examples. And so here, i got to remember that I have to add my exponents, so I'm going to get a negative 2x to the 6th, plus 2 times 3 is 6, and if I add my exponents, I'll get x to the 5th there, minus a 14, add the exponents, x to the 4th, plus 36 x cubed. 
And so that will be my final result, negative 2x to the 6th plus 6x to the 5th minus 14x to the 4th plus 36x cubed. So we get that by always going back to what we know as the distributive property. So that's multiplying a monomial by a polynomial. The last technique we're going to look at is multiplying two polynomials, all right? To multiply two polynomials, you multiply each term in the first polynomial by each term in the second polynomial. Basically, so that every combination of terms gets multiplied by each other. Let's look at this example here. We have 4x plus 7, that quantity, multiplied by the quantity 3x minus 8. Okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first term here, which is 4x, and I'm going to multiply it by this entire polynomial. And I'm going to write it like this starting out. I'm going to have 4x times 3x minus 8. And then I'm going to take this second term in this polynomial, which is 7, and multiply it by both terms in this polynomial, or that entire polynomial there, which is, again, 3x minus 8. And when I do that, this has now turned into two of the two problems like the last example where I just use my distributive property to distribute the 4x. All right, remember when I distribute that, I'm going to get 4 times 3, which is 12, and x times x is x squared. Distribute the 4x to the minus 8 here, I'm going to get a minus 32x. And then again, I distribute here as well as here. I'm going to get 7 times 3x, which is 21x, and then 7 times a negative 8, which is negative 56. All right? One thing that happens when you, you multiply two polynomials that are more than, like, monomials being multiplied is that you might have some terms that are like terms. So when we combine these two terms here, if you look, you got a negative 32x plus 21x. Negative 32 plus 21 is negative 11. And so our final result is going to be a 12x squared minus 11x minus 56. All right. Some of you may have known this method of multiplying as the what we call the FOIL method. F-O-I. L. And FOIL basically stands for an order for which, in which you use to multiply polynomials that are two binomials, right? Um, it just represents, the F represents first, meaning if you look at our main result, if I look at this poly, these two polynomials here, 4x and the 3x are in the first positions, all right? And so if I multiply them, I get this 12x squared here. O is either outside or some people say outer. I'm going to say outside. If I look at here, if I take that 4x and multiply it by that negative 8, that's what I mean by outer or outside. And I get this part of my solution here. I is for inside. All right. 7 and 3x are the two values that are inside when I look at these four terms here. And notice I get this next term right here. And L is for last. And if I look at the 7 distributed to that negative 8, I get this last term here. So if you want to use the FOIL method or you just want to go ahead and do what I did, it's basically the exact same thing. But a lot of people memorize it this way right here. I don't care what you use as long as you know how to multiply. All right. Let's continue. There is one last thing I want to say about the FOIL method. Remember, it only works for multiplying two binomials. In this example here, the FOIL method won't really work because it requires a little bit more multiplication than the FOIL method requires. All right, in this example, it says find f of x times g of x. Here we go with this function notation again. Don't let it scare you. You're going to be doing the exact same thing. Only thing difference is it's given to you in function notation. They're telling us that f of x is x plus 8, and g of x is 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to figure out what f of x times g of x is. Okay? Well, I'm going to take my x plus 8, and I'm going to multiply it by 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. And again, I'm going to employ that first method that I use because the full method doesn't work on this type of example. I'm going to take my x here, and I'm going to multiply it by all of these terms right here. So I'm going to have an x 
times 3x squared plus 6x minus 2 plus this 8 here. And I'm going to take that and multiply it by each of these terms once again. So that will be plus 8 times 3x squared plus 6x minus 2. Of course, this sets up a distributive property. I'm going to distribute. That will be a 3x cubed plus 6x squared. Distribute it one last time. Minus 2x. And now I'm going to distribute this 8. That would be plus a 24x squared plus 48x minus 16. And now all I have to do is to combine like terms, right? Notice here I only have one cube term, right? And so it's going to stay by itself. I can't combine it with any, anything else. But if you notice here, I have a 6x squared and a 24x squared here. They combine to 30x squared. I have a minus 2x and a plus 48x. That's a plus 46x. And then last but not least, I have a minus 16. It is the only constant term, so I have a minus 16. And that will be my final result, 3x cubed plus 30x squared plus 46x minus 16. All right? So that's what f of x times g of x equals. The last example I want to look at is an example that involves a polynomial of several variables. All right, I have 4x cubed y, and I'm going to multiply that by the polynomial 2x squared minus 3x cubed y to the fourth minus 6y squared. All right, again, that is a monomial, right? This part right here is our mono monomial, and this is our trinomial or polynomial here, right? And so when we do this example, I have to use my distributive property, and I'm going to write this out right now so I won't do so much in my head. So I'm going to have a 4x cubed y times a 2x squared minus a 4x cubed y times a 3x cubed y to the fourth minus a 4x cubed y times 6y squared. And the rest is just simplifying, making sure that we can simplify that completely. All right, and now we have two monomials multiplied. 4 times 2 is 8. Notice here, I add my exponents on the x, and I get x to the fifth times y. So that term becomes 8x to the fifth times y. My second term, if I do the 4 times the 3, I get 12. And if you notice here, I have x to the third times x to the third. Add those 3s together, I get x to the sixth. I have a y, remember there's understood to be a 1 in the exponent, and that's a y to the 4th. 1 plus 4 is 5, so I get y to the 5th. And last but not least, a 4 times 6 is 24. I only have an x in this, this monomial here. This monomial here doesn't have one, and so I'll leave that as x cubed. However, I have a y to the first power here and a y to the second power. Add those exponents together using the power rule. We get y to the third power. All right, and so that is simplified, and make sure that after you're done, you make sure that you can't combine any of these terms. In this example, we can't because these aren't like terms. All of these exponents have different, uh, all of these variables have different exponents, so we don't have like terms. But that is how we multiply polynomials.